This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, having gone through and looked at the exemptions available for low value assets or assets that are going to be used for a lease of less than 12 months, uh, we're going to now move on to the, the meat of the standard, if you so like. Whereby, remember, under IFRS 16, all leases apart from those exceptions already mentioned, are now brought on to the financial statement. So they are recognised within the statement of financial position. There is no longer any off-balance sheet finance, so to speak. So remember, what we need to be able to do is we need to recognise this right of use asset and then a lease liability. Now, here I've given you all of the information that is within the standard. Again, I think at financial reporting level, not all of it is going to be examined. The essentials will be focused upon. So what we've got here in terms of the right of use asset is that we look at what the value of the lease liability is. Okay. Uh, then we go through and add on any additional costs that have been incurred. Okay. So there might be some costs that we have at the start in terms of some initial direct costs. So maybe some sort of arrangement fee that you pay to enter into the lease. Uh, if there are any costs of dismantling, like we see in IS 37 and how we have to discount those back to present value and recognize the provision, that still is relevant under IFRS 16 for your right of use asset. But just be careful, uh, there might be then the necessary adjustments of deducting any incentives. So the lessor wants you to enter into the lease. So they might go through there and refund you some of your money back at the start. OK, so if that's the case. Uh, you receive the money, so debit the bank, but the credit will go to the right of use asset, reducing the value of that right of use asset. OK, uh, I suppose the key bit then is if we've got these direct costs, these costs of dismantling and the deduction for any lease incentives, well, what's the value of the lease liability? Okay, well, the value of the lease liability is there. Okay, we look at it separately. So what you've got there is that it is the present value of those payments uh, discounted at the rate implicit within the lease. Okay, so you'd be given the rate implicit within the lease so if you like the effective rate of borrowing on this lease arrangement, if you wanted to, you could calculate it as the IRR of all of those cash flows. OK, uh, again, here, what I think you're likely to go through there and see is, is this bit here. OK, uh, your fixed payments, uh, you will either be given the present value of the minimum lease payments uh, or alternatively, you've got the, those fixed payments that you'd have to discount back to present value. Uh, but I think that's just pushing it a little bit into the realms of financial management and a bit to management accounting. OK. Uh, I think the bullet points afterwards are very much then geared towards strategic business reporting. So carry over rules into some higher level accounting so any variable payments that might change as a result of inflation. So if inflation goes up over the lease, you will pay more. Let's not worry about that. Uh, is there any residual value uh, to do with the value of the asset at the end of the lease? You know, we might have to pay at the end of the lease if, if the asset isn't in the condition that was expected by the lessor. Uh, if there's a termination penalty and it's likely that we're going to terminate the lease, then that is a, an obligation to pay, isn't it? But, you know, who cares at financial reporting? And then don't even worry about the, the, the discussion or the analysis there uh, of the purchase option. OK, if we're reasonably certain to buy it at the end of the lease, then we will record that as part of the, the minimum lease payments. OK, and, and add that in and discount it back. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, no. Uh, just notes, uh, if you can't work out the implicit rate of interest in the lease for some reason, it will be given to you within the exam then you just use your, your normal borrowing rate within the entity but again i just really think that all of those points there 
aren't really relevant. Technically, they are. Okay, it's on the syllabus, but I just really think that there's there's better things to examine at the financial reporting level. Okay. Uh, and then in terms of my subsequent measurement, it's all nice and straightforward. The You've got a right of use asset. So you depreciate that asset. So even though you might find leases a challenge, that there's an easier element to it. Capitalize the right of use asset and depreciate it as normal. So you can work out the carrying value on the statement of financial position and the depreciation expense that goes through profit or loss. There's one small bit just to be careful upon is that the depreciation is calculated on the earlier of the useful life and the lease term. Because if the useful life is shorter than the lease term, then that's when we get the benefits, isn't it? We get the benefits over that useful life. If, however, the useful life is longer than the lease term, then we're not going to get the benefits for the useful life, are we? Because we're only going to use the asset for the lease term. So we always depreciate it over the shorter of the two. As always, there's a little bit to try and trip you up. Uh, just notes, there's an unless, uh, unless the ownership transfers. Uh, if the ownership transfers was at the end of the lease, then we're always going to be using it for its useful life. So therefore, we would depreciate it over its useful life. Okay, and then the liability, it's great, you know, uh, you just go through there, follow your treatment of a financial liability at amortised cost. So there's an important thing to take from this, that the initial measurement could prove a bit of a challenge in terms of the debits that you process and the credit. Okay, not the debit and the credit, but the actual calculation of the NT or entry. You know, working out the present value of the lease payments, uh, then recognising that as the asset and then adjusting the asset for the various bits and pieces to do with uh, direct costs, incentives, dismantling costs. That, that's a challenge. Let's just look at the subsequent measurement again. There's nothing difficult about depreciating the asset. You'll have done so much amortised cost questions on financial instruments that it should be straightforward in terms of what you have here. So just get the first initial recognition bit out of the way and then move on. Because even if you've made a mistake, there will then be continuity marks. You will still get credit for working your wrong numbers in the correct fashion. OK, so so just bear that in mind when you're working a question. Leases can be challenging, but there are easier aspects to it. And I think the only way to go through there and demonstrate that is to work a question. So we'll see that within the next video.